Hi guys! The next step in our JP heater installation is to insert the standpipe into our main diesel tank. In order to do that, first I will have to take some safety measures. Uh, first of all, I'm going to disconnect the battery and the second I will open the fuel tank just to release the pressure. So let's start. Now that I disconnected the battery, I will open the tank. Normally with the key, just like you would refuel. And I will leave it open. This is the standpipe that comes with the JP heater. So in order to install this pipe, you would have to uh, make a hole in the tank, a hole that should be around 18 millimeters in diameter and uh, then you insert the pipe from the inside of the tank and put the rubber grommet and then tighten up this nut but uh, as I don't want to make a hole in the tank in the main tank. I spoke with the manufacturer and uh, he gave me the okay so I bought a thinner pipe as you can see the difference this original pipe is 5.2 millimeters in diameter and this one it's roughly three millimeters in diameter but the hole that i have to make it will be it will be six millimeters so six millimeters it's still better than 18 that it would have to do with uh, this pipe so because i have a citroen relay i can access the tank from the cab by undoing these three clips and uh, lifting this cover up. And here is another lid that is hold in place with three screws. I will undo these screws and take the lid out. And here we have the sender unit so there are several ways to tap in the tank through here one is to disconnect all of these and unscrew this sender unit with a special tool or with a hammer and a chisel it's a bit risky yeah but it'd be better if you use the special tool and disconnect all the connections and then you take the unit out and drill a hole here in the middle between these connections and insert the, the pipe there so definitely this wouldn't fit in there because this is uh, designed that you uh, make the hole directly to the tank not through the sender so this is one option to go through here but uh, recently i found on the internet that uh, some people just drill a hole into the breather pipe here and uh, insert insert the pipe here because underneath this breather pipe it's a larger hole and goes strictly to the tank so i will try this option just to drill a hole here and insert the, the stand pipe and for that i will need to remove this nut and uh, take this uh, breather hose out and drill the hole just to make sure that uh, no debris are going to into the diesel tank so i will unscrew the nut and take the breather pipe out you have to pull a little bit harder take it out it has two 
rubber grommets in there that hold it in place. So as you can see, you can see straight into the tank through this large hole. Now I'm carefully cleaning this area to make sure that nothing goes into the tank. And now I will gently insert the standpipe into the hole just to see how deep it is. So we can measure the depth of the tank to see if we need to cut the pipe. So. Yes, we will need to cut the pipe. And also you, you don't want the pipe to touch the bottom of the tank. Just to make sure that uh, you're not draining your tank overnight when you're using the diesel heater. So the pipe should be shorter. So yeah, I will I will get the measure tape and uh, measure the depth of the tank. I will also have to take in account the the three centimeters of the breather pipe that I have to add to the length of the pipe. So we have 35 centimeters plus 3 it's 38 and that's uh, to the bottom of the tank. So the total length should be 37 centimeters. And uh, this pipe from here, because this bit will, will be inserted also, so we have to measure from here, it's 45.5 five centimeters long and we only need 37 so I will go and uh, cut the pipe before I cut the pipe to the final length I will drill the hole and insert the pipe just to measure it one more time and uh, I will start with a 2.5 millimeter drill and uh, progress my way up to the 6 mil or what it's finally needed. I will go next with 3.5 and I will go really really slow. can insert the pipe but we still have to enlarge the hole so we can screw this in so I will go with 4.5 next so far it looks good So I will go next with the 5 We are almost there. And I have a 5.5 now. As I don't want the hole to be too large. So maybe 
5.5 will be enough so let's see So, yeah, this is the pipe inserted all the way in. So, let's. Oops. Yeah, doesn't work that way. Now we can cut the pipe. After reading the instructions from the manual more carefully, I found out, I found out that uh, the distance between the bottom of the tank and the end of the suction pipe should be 30 to 40 millimeters, with a minimum of 25 millimeters. So instead of cutting the pipe from 38 to 37. I will cut it to 34 centimeters just to be sure that uh, everything runs smoothly. So I measured 34 centimeters and I marked the pipe and now I will use a metal saw to cut it. I'm not quite sure if it's 45 degrees, but definitely has an angle. So I will smooth it down now with a pile and then we'll insert it in the breather hose. This pipe that I bought from eBay came with a rubber hose, a piece of rubber hose and uh, two clamps. So before I will insert the pipe into the tank and before I fit it with uh, a glue, I bought like an epoxy, two components, which will mix together and will bond the metal pipe. This is the product. We'll bond the metal pipe to the plastic breather hose. So before I do that, uh, I will install this rubber hose here and I will insert this uh, blue plastic hose that uh, came with the heater and that will run to the filter and the diesel pump. So I inserted the blue hose and the pipe into the black rubber hose and then I tighten it up with uh, two rings and now I'm going to insert the pipe screw it inside it's a bit hard with this plastic hose So I put the breather hose back in its position and this is how the final layout is going to look like. And now I will just prepare the glue, the epoxy. Put about half quantity of each and mix it really well for about 30 seconds. This should do it. And now I will start applying the glue.
So now all we have to do is to wait for the epoxy to set off and then just to put the covers back in and that's about it. Thank you very much for watching.